damn it, man. I'm on the main card. I forgot my sunglasses to wear inside. <laughs> Shit. I'm supposed to do that now, right? Yeah. Mike, over here. What's going on, buddy? How How's doing? it going? Uh, doing well. Doing well. Uh, how was the uh, the travel to, to Vancouver? I know uh, you got a lot of Canadian support here. How's it been the last couple of days? Dude, it was awesome, man. It felt like, you know... I've got felt like a little army of us going out because I've got uh, three teammates that, that came out as well fighting on the card. So Jasmine, Jazz Davisius, Kyle Nelson, Deanna Balbita. Then with that, we had uh, our, all our coaches together. So Andre Grambois, Danny Patterson, Adrian Woolley, Cruella and Um So uh, D Marks, Matt Jelly, like a bunch of us all kind of came out together. So it didn't feel like it's not you and two coaches flying to some country for a week and being kind of by yourselves it's like it felt like you know we're getting the band back together we're all going out at the same time man so it was it was pretty sweet all coming together as far as the travel dude it was easy i fell asleep in toronto and woke up in vancouver so it was perfect man couldn't there you, go. you got it made um what about team alpha male i know you coached there for a number of years you're getting a lot of messages and support from those guys because you were a you were a staple there for for a number of years and anytime i interview a fighter they'd be like yeah coach mike is is uh, helping us out yeah, man, I might not be living down there anymore, but those would be my teammates for life. Like, I absolutely love those guys. I was talking to Feely earlier today. Coach Joey messaged me uh, two days ago. Like, a lot of these guys, are, Danny Castillo is normally in my corner. They uh, Unfortunately, it didn't work out this time. He was devastated. He's like, dude, my I have every week booked up, and, and you, you, you hadn't gotten a fight, and... Uh, we booked a family vacation. That was the only weekend we had off for the summer, and uh, and so I, I'm not gonna be able to make it for this one. So unfortunate not to have him because I love the guys. You know, big brother to me. But uh, you know, I've got some some absolutely world class coaches in my corner. So I feel really confident with with the guys I brought with me. And we've talked about you know the push you're getting on this card, the placement. Uh, I see you're doing a lot of media. Did the MMA hour? You done some local stuff here today. How do you uh, take all that in without you know letting it get to your head a little bit? I know you're a humble guy, but uh, you know it's hard not to get caught up in all this. No, I honestly, one, I enjoy this. Like this, this is just like nothing but compliments for the work that I've put into the sport. Like that's kind of how I view this, right? You can view it as obligations, but like this is just people telling me like, hey, you're doing a good job. And that's, you know, definitely feels good after putting in 20 years worth of work. And, and as far as like the increased obligations and stuff, like every fight that I've had with the company so far has been outside of my comfort zone and pushed me even more where like Mickey Gall was or sorry contender series I was main event for contender series I'm like oh shit my name's on the on the on the billet like I'm the last guy like it's it's coming down to my fight and the last fight people are going to remember then it's okay well my debut they'll probably give me like an undercard on some fight pass you know whatever fight and I'm fighting a 10 fight, 10 fight UFC veteran my debut in a sold out arena then the next one I'm I'm fighting in Vegas on the main card of a, of a fight night. Now I'm on the main card of a pay-per-view. Like, every one of them was like, this is bigger than I thought they were going to. This is, you know, it's more of a push than I thought I was going to get. So it just, it's continued to happen with all three of my experiences so far with the UFC. And so far, I'm 3-0 you know, with three first-round stoppages. So as far as the, like, is it, is, is it too much? It certainly hasn't been so far, and I I'm 100% sure it's not going to be this week. Yeah, my last question. I don't think anyone else asked any hockey stuff here because, you know, i got to sure. do my Canadian duty here. Did the Leafs make a mistake not making a better effort to keep, keep uh, Kyle Dubas, in your opinion? I don't know, man. That's uh, I, I, I follow, uh, I watch hockey at the house. Like, my dad and my brother always have it on, and I watch it with the guys, but I don't follow it really religiously enough to know, like, the whole roster. Mike, right here. Um, I asked Jasmine this this question. I mean, you both got on the mic after UFC 70 and called for the return to Canada. Were you surprised by the traction that got? Because it feels like, at least in part, this is why we're here. I'm just happy that we're back. Like I, I had, uh, I had heard that night that they were planning on coming back already. You know, I made the Jazz and I got on the mic, and it was funny. I was looking forward to a, you know, a short little break before the next camp, but I'm like, come back to Canada soon. We put down the mic, and a friend of mine with the UFC was like, hey, just so you know, they're coming back in June to uh, Vancouver. So it was like right back into camp. I'm like, okay, I already had a date in mind. I'm like, well, I'm right back into training camp. No break again. Let's get right to it, put the work in. And, you know, even though I was trying to take a little bit of uh, – a vacation, your your mind's focused on a date, right? You can't you can't really ever get it out of your head. So, um, I'm just excited that we're back in Canada, man. It's been years. This has been a dream of mine my entire fight career since before I got into fighting professionally. I've always wanted to fight in the UFC at home in Canada, in front of just wild Canadian fans. Everybody knows how the Canadian fans get at at UFC fights. Like, 
we we're loud, man. We're passionate. We we really get behind our fighters. So uh, I'm really excited to put on a show for these guys. Well, the timing was impeccable. Um, it seemed like it took a little bit for your fight in particular to be announced. Were you in conversation with the UFC? Was there any fear that maybe they didn't have something for you? Oh yeah, there's always fear, right? So I, I, I didn't have a fight booked and uh, they didn't, I was one of the, the later guys they put on the card and I just started seeing the card fill up. Like they had a lot of fights before my fight finally got announced. And uh, yeah, I was worried that I wasn't gonna get, gonna get on and you know, my manager gave me a little bit of the, you know, he's, he's trying to let me down easy. He's like, hey man, it, it looks like it's a little bit full and you know, they're, they're waiting for someone to look for a fight at welterweight who isn't already booked and who isn't injured, you know, just I guess logistically there, there weren't guys. And he's like, you know, there's a chance you're not on this one. I don't want you to get your hopes up too high. I'm like, buddy, I'm getting my hopes until, until it's June 9th and everyone's weighed in and I don't have an opponent, I'm fighting on June 10th. So I'll get my hopes as high as I want. And I'm going to be let down either way, so I might as well get my hopes up and, and start focusing on it before. You know, I don't understand when people are like that. Oh, I'm not going to get all excited. I'm like, dude, I'm going to get excited as hell. And if it doesn't work out, then I'll be upset either way. So I'd rather get the, the fun out of it on the first half. Um, and it worked out, man. We got that fight. And, you know, again, it took a little while, but I, I got a, a full camp to prepare for this guy. Like I said, I got straight out of the cage from the last fight right back into camp and right back into training and preparation for Saturday night. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm really excited for this. And last one for me, when you, when you talk about this fight, Adam is a finisher, you are a finisher. I think you have, both have eight or nine straight finishes. I mean, it feels like it's, it's too obvious to say, but do you see this going the distance? Absolutely not. I know I'm winning this fight by stoppage. I'm getting my 10th stoppage win on Saturday night, 100%. I'll be 3-0 and in the UFC with three stoppages, 4-0 and with four stoppages if you count contender series, and in my career, 10 wins with 10 stoppages. That is what's going to happen on Saturday night. Mike, on the front, right here. Yep. Uh, I just like your response to Adam was in here earlier, and he said that you're uh, a master of the compliment sandwich, where you'll compliment him, and then you'll kind of throw a shady insult at him, and then you'll end your your thought with a compliment too, as in like, he's really tough. I'm better at everything, but he's also really tough. So, what what is your response to Adam's? Uh, he says it kind of gnaws at him sometimes. I I, I don't hear any lies so far. That's, ex that's exactly what I do, and that's exactly how I feel. Sure. Uh, and in the past, uh, we've, we've heard fighters like Israel Adesanya. He attended UFC 193 as a fan. Uh, Tom Maswell attended a fight. Saul Andre Arlovsky ended up fighting him, too. I believe you – did you attend 129? In yeah, Toronto? I was at 129. So what was your experience there as a fan? Yeah. That, so I had made my pro debut like two weeks before 129. So my dad got us tickets. We went and watched it together, and it was just such a – such a, a surreal moment seeing the cage, seeing guys from the area and from Canada ha fighting in the UFC cage in the same room as me. And, and it, it really felt like I was going to be there one day. I, I was telling myself, I'm like, this, you're not just a spectator. You're not just here walking. You're not just here having a couple of fights. You're going to be in this cage. You're going to be on pay-per-view. You're going to be fighting in that cage in front of 20, 30,000 Canadian fans at some point. So I feel like it really was kind of almost manifested in a way, but uh, yeah, it's it's cool to have heard guys like that. I heard the same thing about McGregor saying, you know, being at the fights in Ireland and saying that he's going to be the main event someday, and it's pretty cool to be able to uh, add myself to that list. What, what do you so right over here, Mike? What do you what do you think it's going to be like when you walk through into the cage and you got Rogers Arena packed? Those Canadian fans that you say are really passionate, them screaming like, how do you envision that feeling? And and what do you think about it? I put a lot of time into this, into feeling, visualizing what I, I think it's going to be like, what it's going to feel like, what it's going to sound like, what the air is going to feel like, what my skin's going to feel like. And the last few fights especially, like once I get into the cage, that's when I just start feeling peace, man. That's when I feel calm. I feel like everybody in, in life falls victim to looking forward to things or not living in the present moment. And as much as martial arts keeps me centered and present in the moment as far as like sparring and having to be focused on what's in front of you, I'm always relaying it toward my next fight or my next potential fight. And especially once you have a date in mind, like everything is run through the lens of how is this going to work on, on June 10th. So when I'm finally in there, it feels like this sense of peace where I'm like, I am certain I've done everything I possibly could in preparation for this. And now I don't have to look forward to anything. I don't have to compare myself to anything. All I have to do is just be myself right now and do what I do and trust my instincts and allow my nearly 20 years of preparation 
to be on display tonight to get the job done. And, and I'm curious, do you have any connection to, to BC at all? I know you're from, from out east, but uh, have you spent much time in Vancouver, BC before? This is my first time in BC, so the only two provinces before this week that I'd never been to are Newfoundland and BC, so awesome to be able to check BC off the, the list. It's, I've never heard anything bad about BC. I've just heard amazing things about Vancouver, and I can see why we, we got off the plane, and just that first deep inhale, I could feel the air, I could feel the water, I could feel just how, how much nature is in this city. Like, I'm in love with this city so far. I was getting off the, I was getting on the phone with my fiance and I was like, dude, we need to win a couple of fights and we're, we're getting a summer home out here. We're getting a condo out here, an apartment out here or something because I need to be able to come back because this city's absolutely beautiful. Awesome. Thanks, man. Hey, Mike. Over here, brother. Yo, uh, buddy. What do you have against second rounds? <laughs> <laughs> All your fights seem to end in the first round. What do you got against second rounds? Look, man, I'm not getting paid by the hour to be here. Like, I get paid for the job if it takes me... 15 seconds versus 15 minutes. I'm a, I'm a man of efficiency, bud. I appreciate that, bro. And uh, I've heard that some boys are making the trip over from back east. Some of the boys are making the trip up from California. Uh, some big social media influencers, the Nelk boys, they're going to be supporting you. So what does that mean to have them backing you? Dude, it's it's amazing to have those guys back me. Like they're absolutely killing it right now. Like you can't turn on social media without seeing the Nelk boys. And you know to hear from them that they're interested in working with me again. You could view any of this stuff: the main card placement, the coming back to Canada, the working with the Nelk boys. You could view that as pressure. Like, oh man, this is like, what does all this mean? It's like, what it means is you're gonna go out there and win your fight anyway on Saturday night, and you're just gonna have that much bigger of a, a celebration after. Like, I'm gonna have some new friends to hang out with and 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 celebrate with and you know promote ourselves with like I, it's uh it it means a lot again to get that like compliment from these guys saying that they believe in what I'm doing enough to to back me so I'm really proud to be working with the Nelk boys and working with these guys so I'm um, I'm pretty pumped and one thing I should have said with the 15 seconds or 15 minutes the efficient should have hit them with the letter Kenny quote, man. If, you, if there's one thing you should be, it's efficient. There we go. I got to throw it out there, man. Mike, right here. Yeah. How proud of you um, to be? Uh, how proud are you to be a representative of Canadian mixed martial arts? And what do you think of the current state of Canadian mixed martial arts? I'm so proud to be able to represent my country. I love Canada. I love that I get to go out on the international stage and, and wear my flag. You know, my debut. We were still allowed to carry flags and I had that blood soaked thing in the cage with me and I loved it, man. It's hanging in my room. I, I look at it every single day. I love that I get to represent Canada on, on the world stage. I've been I've been dying for more Canadian talent to come out. I want you know, I want Canadians to hold belts. I want Can Canadian MMA to really make a rise and you know, if I can play a part in that, especially on Saturday night, I'm I'm more than happy to lead the charge or to, to help inspire the next generation. As far as like the current state of Canadian mixed martial arts, I think you give it like one, two, three years, we're going to see a lot of new young talent from Canada coming into the show because there are some absolute killers that nobody knows yet that are just a few wins away from the UFC and are going to make some big waves. Are you happy to be the one that's kind of leading that charge with all the new prospects coming through? Yeah, for sure, man. If, if I'm the one leading the way, then that's awesome, right? It's funny, I was talking to... Uh, Back, back to the alpha male comment, I was talking to uh, some of the guys down at alpha male, you know, uh, Feely especially, he's one of, my, one of my closest friends, we were chatting about it, we're like, man, it really felt like, you know, when we were like 20, 21, there were, there were all these guys up, up at the top kind of talking about, you know, all the vets that were, were there, and he's like, and they're gone now, it just feels different, and I'm like, no, we're the guys now. Like, yeah, we were 22, 23, looking up to the the Fabers and the Chad Mendez and the Joseph Benavidez and the Lance Palmers and, and, and Danny Castillos and all these guys. But it's like, and, and we should, still should be looking up to those guys. Those are our big brothers. But we're the guys running the show now. We're the guys who are leading the charge. And, and the, the young 22-year-olds are the ones that are looking up, up to us. And they're looking to us for the, to how to act and how to carry ourselves and how to train and how to fight and how to dig deep. It's like, it, it's cool to be able to, to have the like changing of the guard and the changing, you know, the passing of the torch when, especially when you don't really realize it until like one day you look around, you're like, shit, we're the, weren't, aren't we 22, man? Aren't we 23? Isn't our whole life, our whole career ahead of us? Like, no, man, I'm 31. I'm deep in this. This is the time to get this done. Thanks, Mike. Mike over here. Yeah. How much of an impact did those couple of years that you had 
taken off to focus on grappling, to focus on coaching, mm. have in getting you to this point now where when you came back, the knockout win over Solomon Renfro, contender series, on to where you are now? I think it was huge. I was, you know, I was 25. I was doing well um, fighting professionally. I probably could have, after a win or two, gotten to the UFC, you know, a few years earlier. But I think taking those three, four years off from competition and three years of full-time coaching and cornering whatever it was, 20 to 22 UFC fights and then the hundreds of other fights I cornered through regional circuits and other promotions, it really helped me build an MMA game with a, a, a deep, strong foundation. It made me understand the game more. It made me understand fighting. It made me understand my preparation more and what different fighters need and what I need versus other teammates or other fighters that I see. So it really allowed me to mature as a fighter without having those years of damage from fights. So I think, yeah, that was absolutely monumental. I think I could have done well had I been thrown into the UFC right off the bat, but I think there, that taking the long road was the right road for me. Does it feel to you that, that some people at times see that it's just 11 fights and you're 31, as you said, and kind of think this guy doesn't have that experience, he doesn't have, because they maybe don't know all of the coaching, they don't know all those years that went into it, and, and you're able to kind of not sneak up on people a little bit because it's now becoming a highlight reel of, sure. of first-round finishes, but catch people off guard a little bit with the depth of your game? Yeah, I think it's easy to see, like, not a ton of – fights professionally and, and think maybe I don't have that kind of experience, but I've been around for a long time, man. I haven't taken any breaks from this sport, even though I took time off competing. MMA has always been at the forefront of my mind and, and grappling and, and wrestling and fighting and striking. And, you know, I, I, I love that, that I don't have a ton of fights yet. And it's kind of almost seems like, where did this guy come from? You know, like why, you know, so it's, it's, it's the classic story of guys like popping up out of nowhere, like Jorge Masvidal seemed like he popped out of nowhere and is famous. It's like, dude, I remember watching that guy kick Eve Edwards in the head in Bodog fights back in like, what was that, 2007? I was like, dude, this guy's going to be a killer. I was right, took 13 years, but man, and he was already a killer at that time, right? Like he was already professional. It's not like that's when he started training, right? This guy's been an animal his whole life and then... Uh, and now just finally got the, the recognition on the world stage, right? So, you know, not to compare myself to him in, in any way, but uh, kind of feels like that where I've been around for a while. I just haven't felt the need to let people know yet. Now that you're sitting on the dais with a pay-per-view backdrop behind you, any message for the classmates of 14-year-old of Mike Malad at Hillfield that thought you were crazy for chasing this dream? Told you. Just over here. Just want a prediction from you for the main event between Nunes and Aldana. How can you how can you bet against Nunez? You know? She's amazing. She's the greatest female fighter of all time in my opinion. She's absolutely incredible. So, you know, no disrespect to her opponent, but yeah, Nunez is, is a beast. She's a different level.